Hey, it's Mr. Veve, and this lesson is on Mendelian genetics. So let's get right into it with our first key concept. Mendel's research showed that traits are inherited as discrete units, and we're going to come back to that in just a little bit. But first of all, who is Gregor Mendel? He's got a couple of things right here. Well, Gregor Mendel was an Austrian monk, and he became very interested with how traits are passed down from generation to generation. So in the mid-1800s, around 1856 to 1863, thereabouts, um, he devised a plan how to test this. So he actually did this with pea plants. That's why you see that comic there of them getting very tired of uh, peas. So Gregor Mendel is often also called the father of genetics or the father of modern genetics uh, because of a lot of the work that he did in identifying how traits are passed down by doing all these experiments. So speaking of those experiments, let's talk about what he did. So very first off, he kept a very detailed journal of the different experiments he did with these pea plants. He also used purebred pea plants, uh, which is very important because it actually helps make things, uh, makes things a lot more predictable. So what we're going to look at here is the traits that he was looking at. Now, Gregor Mendel got very lucky because the traits that he chose to look at were either present or not present. So the, uh, the flower color, color was either white or purple the shape of the pea was either round or wrinkled or green or yellow and all these different things it was either or so that actually made it quite a bit easier for him to do these experiments and record accurate results so what he did and don't pay attention to all the stuff that's written on the side unless you're really curious about how to cross pollinate this is basically what he did so with cross pollination he took little bits of the stamen from a purple flower on this pea plant and he used it to pollinate the white flower on the other plant so he wanted to use the pollen from the purple to pollinate the white and then see what would happen from there so he's going to examine the offspring after that happens so cross pollination is the key so what happened he took purple plants he cross pollinated them with white plants and remember these are all pea plants but we're just going to be talking about them in terms of flower color this was the parent generation what we call the p1 generation and what happened well all of the offspring had purple flowers every single one of them and that's what we call the f1 generation that is the first generation after the parents so f1 first offspring so this was really interesting to him but he said well wait a second what if i take it a step further what if I cross two plants from that first offspring generation? So let's see, he crossed two purple plants from the F1 generation, and lo and behold, look what he got. In the F2 generation, the second offspring, he got all purple, but every fourth plant had a white flower. Okay, so that white trait showed up once again, but it took a couple of generations to do so. So this is really interesting. He concluded, well, there have to be these discrete units, and he called them alleles, and you have to get one from each parent. So that's the only way to, um, to conclude how the white color on the flower skipped a generation. So in, an example here, if you've got a pair of chromosomes, you've got an allele for having a purple flower on one, an allele for having a white flower on another. You get one from each parent, and then what happens is you see which one is expressed. And we'll talk about how that is in just a minute. So another thing he talked about was, okay, the concept of something that is dominant or something that is recessive. So something that is dominant, and you see key, uh, key feature here is that the word dominant is in all capital letters. A dominant allele is expressed even if it is paired with a recessive allele. So if you have one dominant and one recessive, that dominant trait is going to dominate. That's why it's called dominant. The recessive, all of those are in lowercase letters, allele is only visible when it's paired with another recessive allele. So if you look at the chart, the only way to get a green P is if both alleles, both copies from each parent, is actually a recessive allele. Okay, so when we actually write these out uh, traits, we use um, capital letters to denote a dominant allele and lowercase letters to denote a recessive allele. So this gave rise to Mendel's laws. There's three laws we're gonna look at. First law is of dominance. In his case, he's like, there's always one allele that is way more dominant to another. In this case, purple flower was way dominant over white flower. And there were a number of other traits that he looked at, but that's the one we're focusing on right now. 
The other law he looked at was law of segregation. And that just means that each gamete, after the, the, the plant goes through meiosis to make its gametes, each gamete gets one copy of each gene. So that means the offspring get one copy from the male and one copy from the female end of the plant, and that makes the actual new plant. So those gametes are made and those genes and the one copy of each gene is actually segregated uh, independently. And then the last is a law of independent assortment and it should look familiar for you guys, but that just means that um, alleles um, for certain genes are on different chromosomes. So on chromosome one is the allele for uh, flower color. And then maybe on chromosome number four is the allele for whether or not the plant is tall or short. So not all of the genes uh, have to be on the same chromosomes. They can have all these different um, uh, assortments for the uh, actual genes and chromosomes. So that gives rise to the study of how genetic traits are passed from parents to offspring. That's called heredity. So what are traits? Remember he talked about he wanted to figure out why traits would go from one uh, parent to an offspring. So a trait is a characteristic that is inherited. These are passed from parents to offspring. And if you look in humans, there are certain things that are definitely traits. There are uh, the ability to roll your tongue and the ability, uh, the non-ability to roll your tongue. Uh, whether or not you have a widow's peak right here in your hairline, attached earlobes or not attached earlobes. All these different things uh, are traits that can be inherited, and we've proven that they are inherited. So a lot of these are really interesting. See which ones you think you have. So genes are what determine our traits. So genes are small se segments of DNA, and uh, those small segments of DNA will have different alleles. Now, the alleles that you have determine what trait is expressed. So if you look at a specific gene and you look at the alleles that you have on that gene, then you will see what trait you will express. So there's a couple different things we need to look at here. So uh, a word homozygous means that you have two copies of either the dominant or the recessive allele. So if you are homozygous dominant, that means for a particular gene, you have two copies of the dominant allele. If you are homozygous recessive for that gene, that means you have two copies of the recessive allele for that gene. I put it in letters down there, capital A, capital A, and then lowercase a, lowercase a. The other word is heterozygous. So if you are heterozygous for a gene, that means you have one copy of the dominant allele and one copy of the recessive allele. So homozygous, dominant or recessive, and then heterozygous. Now, if you are heterozygous, you're always going to express the dominant allele because it is dominant over the recessive one. Okay, so finally, we have to look at the differences between these two words, genotype and phenotype. So the word genotype means, quite literally, the version of the alleles that you inherit. That is your genes. So if you look at two examples here, there's one gene that you have a homozygous dominant, two capital Bs. And the other genotype we can look at is maybe homozygous recessive, meaning you have two recessive copies of uh, two recessive alleles on that gene. The phenotype is the physical expression of that genotype. So if we're looking at eye color, uh, maybe homozygous dominant gives you brown eyes and homozygous recessive gives you blue eyes. So the big B, big B, little B, little B, those are your genotypes. The phenotype is brown or blue, the physical expression of that genotype. And we get a lot of that from Gregor Mendel's experiments that he did very early on.